the most intriguing examples are of blind people becoming sighted for the first time. Vicky Naratuk had been blind from birth. I've never seen anything, no light, no shadows, no nothing. A lot of people ask if I see black. No, I do not see black. I do not see anything at all. And in my dreams, I don't see any visual impressions. It's just taste, touch, sound, and smell, but no visual impressions of anything. In her early 20s, Vicky was involved in a serious car accident. The next thing I recall, I was in Harborview Medical Center and looking down at everything that was happening. And it was frightening because I'm not accustomed to see things visually because I'd never had before. And initially it was pretty scary. And then I finally recognized my wedding ring and my hair and I thought, is this my body down there? And am I dead or what? We can't bring her back in the classroom. They kept saying, we can't bring her back, we can't bring her back. And they were trying to frantically work on this thing that I discovered was my body and I felt very detached from it. And sort of, so what? And I was thinking, you know, what, what are these people getting so upset about? Then I thought, I'm out of here. I can't get these people to listen to me. And as soon as I thought that, I went up through the ceiling as if it were nothing. And it was wonderful to be out there and be free, not worry about bumping into anything. <laughs> and I knew where I was going. And I heard this sound of wind chimes. It was the most incredible sound that I could describe. It was from the very lowest to the very highest tones. As I was approaching this area, there were trees and there were birds and quite a few people, but they were all like made out of light. And I could see and it was incredible, really beautiful. And I was overwhelmed by that experience because I couldn't really imagine what light was like. It's still a very emotional thing when I talk about this because um, there was a point at which I, I, I could bring forth any knowledge I wanted to have and it was like this place was where all knowledge was and then I was sent back and then I went back into my body and it was excruciatingly painful and very heavy and I, I remember feeling very sick Vicky's case suggests that her mind was working at a time when her brain was unable to supply her with such visual information, even if she could see. Vicky Umipeg from Seattle in the USA has been blind since birth. In January 1973, she was terribly injured in a car crash. I had a skull fracture, concussion, neck injury, back injury, leg injury, and I was dead for four minutes. Vicky's heart had stopped. Was she clinically dead or just in a deep coma? My back was up against the ceiling and then I was looking down at everything. The one doctor said, well, it's a pity now that she could be deaf as well as blind because there's blood on her left eardrum. And then the female doctor said, well, we don't even know if she's going to survive this coma. And if she does, she could be in a permanent vegetative state. And that made me mad. As she fought for her life, something even more extraordinary happened. Vicky could see for the very first time. I felt like it was a nightmare because I have never been accustomed to perceiving of anything from a distance. And 
I touch things. I, I'm, my, my world is at arm's length. I, I perceive of everything tactily, and I couldn't translate what it was that I was receiving. And it was scary to be able to, a lot of people have asked me, well, wasn't it wonderful to see? Actually, no, it wasn't. It was terrible initially. I saw this ring on my left ring finger, and I thought, OK, that is me. And I also realized I, I had very long hair then down to my waist, and I realized that they'd shaved off quite a lot of it, and I was pretty upset about that. How could Vicky's blind eyes see? I mainly dream even with taste, touch, sound, and smell. But in my dreams, there is no light, no color, and there are no visual impressions. Vicky's experience interests scientists. She works with a psychologist from New York University specializing in the near-death experiences of the blind, Sharon Cooper. If you compared her case with many sighted near-death experiencers, you would not find differences. You, the only difference that I was able to discern between her case and a sighted person is her description of color. She called it different brightnesses of light, and that's because she had no way to understand what color was. She did notice differences in the environment during her experience. She just didn't know what to call them. Vicky Umipeg survived and returned to her world of darkness. She still has no doubt that for just a few minutes, she was able to see. I do know that there are many people who are going to be skeptical and who don't understand and who don't believe what I say, but I know what I experienced, I know what I saw, I know what I heard, I know what I felt. and. So I just leave it at that.